Let's talk about Isaac. So it, it's crazy how many messages I got today and yesterday. People telling me like, you gotta, you gotta look at this guy, Isaac. And everyone said the same thing. And everyone said how likable he is. Mm-hmm. And, and there's exactly. a reason as to why he's likable. And I'll tell you that in a sec, but let's talk about the body language a little bit. Um, a lot of open gestures, obviously. You guys noticed as he talked, he was very animated with the hands and these weren't inwards gestures. These weren't tight gestures. Very open, very giving. Usually giving and kind people move outwards, whereas takers and you know, you have these smaller, tighter. So very big uh, open gestures. His illustrators were on point. So illustrators are the gestures we make with our hands as we speak. When we're being truthful and we're engaged in what we're saying, the same thought that causes our words causes our movement. It's our thought mm -hmm. coming out. So we speak with our hands and everything is synced. When we're deceptive, the way the thought works is different. First, our mind says, okay, say this, now do this. So you might see a liar go, I'm so pissed. You know what I mean? As opposed oh. to, I am so pissed. Oh. So that, that, that timing. His illustrators were on point. As he was talking, we're seeing those moves synchronized with his gestures. That's very genuine feeling. Um, he had insane musculature in his upper forehead. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but a lot of wrinkles, a lot of lines up here, up here, up here. He talked with his eyebrows up a lot. This mm -hmm. signals um, innocence, but also empathy. Our eyebrows go up when we see, like notice how you bump into someone in the grocery store that you know. First yeah. that up, his eyebrows go up and go, hey, it's a <laughs> reflex we have. It shows ah. innocence. The same way we show like, I've got nothing to hide. This shows no mm -hmm. ill intent. And he's got- okay. So so I was going to say, I, I was just about to say, it's a little bit of a joke, but uh, my mom complains all the time in my videos that my eyebrows are too high and then I'm going to get wrinkles from it because I keep, I keep raising, <laughs> raising my yeah. eyebrows. So now I can just, I can just turn up, turn back to my mom and say, well, yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm conveying empathy, mom. hundred <laughs> percent. So it's okay. Connection, <laughs> empathy, connection, empathy, and seeking approval. So especially when we say something that we want people to connect with, oh, we tend to yeah. go up with the eyebrows where they say like that that really happened. Like the, you won't believe this, like ah. empathize with this, come let's ah. connect on this. Connect so, with me. <laughs> so uh, we also see this in YouTubers a lot when they ask for that subscribe, you know, like guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button. <laughs> so, so we see a lot of that. So he had a lot of that and not only was he doing it, but we see all that wrinkling from, from doing it a lot. So this is an empathetic person who connects emotionally. When the lawyer was asking questions, he would lean in to really listen. And then he was talk as he would talk, he would engage that in contrast with this doctor that we just saw now who had a lot of heavy musculature down here, but very smooth up here. This is a skeptical overthinker. And we even see that with this doctor in the way he was taking questions very literally. You know what I mean? Like when a question was, like, I don't have the exact answer to that specific thing on that specific day, specific, specific, skeptical, deep thinker, musculature here. Like Kurt right now. In, in fairness to the doctor, <laughs> That is how you tell your clients to handle a yeah, deposition. Exactly. Sure. Answer sure. that question as literally as possible. Yeah. Sure. But this is, this is an indication also like, yeah, that, that's actually a really good point. But I do feel like this comes naturally for this person and we're sure. not going to see him engage. His emotions won't engage him that much. I doubt it's his first deposition. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah for, good point. that's for sure. Maybe he's been stung before by, by letting his emotions get the best of him. Um, the other thing about Isaac, he had a low blink rate. So usually when we're, especially because he was talking about stressful things, you know, he was talking about his friends arguing. He obviously feels for both of them. And that, that was so cute. I just want to give him a big hug. Yeah. Uh, but his blink rate remained pretty steady. Uh, and that's, you know, it's not something like, it's not something I expect for the blink rate to go up. It's just when we are stressed and nervous about something, blink rate tends to go up. His was very steady, very low. Between this conversation um, and the last one, I've never been more self-conscious about my blink rate. <laughs> i'm not looking i'm not looking uh, then another thing i don't know if you guys noticed this but very often he tended to, he tended to explain things by counting like this with his fingers did you guys notice that like very often he'd be like she's like this she's like that even when there wasn't a list of things to say he would do like like this like he's counting on his fingers he definitely this did that every time he talked about cuts and bruises he goes no cuts no bruises no whatever when he, yeah. when he was asked about the face he did that like five times yeah. yeah. So, so this is someone who it, we see in that body language that he wants to give the whole story here. Like he's not here to hold anything back. He wants to give every single point, everything that can be said, he wants to say it. So mm -hmm. that's what we're seeing there. Um, when he talked about how Amber is making the, this up, 
remember at some point he was talking about how she, she's wrong for doing this and she's now making these false accusations. All of a sudden, those smoother illustrators became more stop gestures. So we look at the fingers to indicate the movement of fingers indicate how stressed we are. When we tend to get stressed or, or we feel defensive, our fingers go inwards because mm -hmm. this makes a lot of sense, right? We're protecting the fingers. We're getting ready for an altercation. As we relax, our fingers relax. But there's a point at which they go past relaxation to what we call stop gestures. And this is something like, let's say you're in traffic and somebody slams the brakes. What's the first thing you do with your hands? <gasps> right? Mm. So or something oh, like this, we tend to go, oh my God, stop. Like, so at yeah. that point, when he was talking about her accusations, we saw a lot of those stop gestures. He was talking, there was, there was a lot of this karate chopping going on. Like he wants this to stop. This is when we're thinking stop, stop, stop. Yeah. Um, the, so the, the way Johnny's looking at him is interesting. There's real love there, like a real, like a real brotherhood, like a real uh, deep yeah. friend. There's also a little hint of mischief. Like they've gotten into trouble together. <laughs> It's the way, yeah. you know what I mean? It's the way old, like, old, like frat brothers will look at each other. Yeah, I it could, I could of, sense that. And yeah. then, and there was an indication of that too, verbally with, uh, with Isaac, when, when he was asked about, did do you, did you ever see Johnny Depp do drugs? And he was like, yeah, I did him with him. <laughs> like we did him together. Yeah. Um, so that was a, it was a very, and, it, and he was just, he was just the same way that he was when he was explaining anything else. So I, I could definitely see yeah. that, that mischief. Super, yeah, super honest, very little, like this is a man who, who wouldn't even want to lie because first it's not really part of his MO, but also it's it, like, you see how much he wants to, he doesn't want either of them to be here. He's that friend, you know, like you're at a party, things get out of hand. There's always that friend who wants everyone to get along again. He's like, guys, what's going on here? We're all friends. This is him. It hurts him to see his friends doing this. Yeah. Um, one more thing. So the reason he's very likable, I'll tell you the reason he's very likable. So he's got that extroverted artistic type, right? We see it. Like he's extroverted, he's artistic. He talks about his art a lot. He talks about himself a lot. So the ego is up there. <laughs> but despite that, he's not arrogant or condescending. So typically when you have that kind of person who talks about themselves and I've, I had this art exhibition and I was going to, you know, I don't, I don't, he said, I don't even paint anymore. That's how much this thing is distressing. I don't even paint anymore. It's about me. This fight is about me. But typically people like that, those extroverts, big personalities tend to be condescending, arrogant, and very self-righteous. He doesn't have that. So mm -hmm. he has the likability of an extrovert plus some humility that goes with that. So it kind of, it's the best of both worlds. So there, yeah. there are very few people who are going to look at him and go, I don't like this guy because yeah. he's got that extrovertness with that humility. So that was amazing. Yeah. Um, like what, like one of the, one of the comments that he said about himself that I remember that was that he's like, he's like, I'm just a schnook painter here. Like what, like, what am I, like, what is this? Like, how is this my life? You know? Um, and then he referred to, uh, to Johnny, you know, giving, he gave me his sandwich, man. He shared his sandwich with, with me. Like, how am I going to share my sandwich with him? <laughs> so gratitude is so important. And he was showing that infinitely towards Johnny Depp. Like, I feel like this guy, I mean, I don't know what they have planned for witnesses in his favor, but this guy, like he should have been like, he should have closed this whole thing because he is like, you listen to this guy and you go, yeah, Johnny Depp's a good guy. Like if like this guy has convinced me that Johnny Depp is a good guy, he has his moments, but he's a good guy. That Did you guys feel the same? Yeah. Oh, not so I much. Okay, I'm well, not well, as convinced. I mean, I see. So I, I look at th things through the eyes of a lawyer, right? This is exactly what the cross-examination presented, which is uh, maybe not well done, but you expose the biases, right? Gratitude, sure. Friendly guy. That doesn't yeah. actually mean anything about Johnny Depp, who is also going to have all this evidence said about how toxic and problematic this relationship was. And also he's indebted to him on a, on a very fundamental way. And he presents it friendly, which yeah. I agree with on, on all of your parts. But uh, from a legal perspective, I, this feels like the only way he could come out is Johnny's a good guy. Amber's a good guy. He's not really probably deciding that many people are not good guys. And so I can discount that assertion. That's a good point. That's, I'm going to give Hogue that. That's a really good point because this guy sees the good in everyone. So he might just be giving us the glass half full version of Johnny Depp. Well, he said That's they were both great, point. right? And the rest of the yeah. trial is how they were both very not great. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it. I agree with you. Seems like a fun guy to have around. Yeah. I just discount it. That's all. That's, that's I mean, great. That's such a great but with regard to the way that he sees Amber, he loved Amber. You know, yeah. he was like tripping over himself to like give her all of these compliments and accolades. 
And yet he gave information that that showed that, like, despite the fact that he loves her, he 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 saw some things that she did that was that's going to be indicating some not so great things about her. And then in, in cross examination, you would think that they would be able to pull something, some kind of information, some kind of detail from him that's similar to Johnny that would kind of do the same thing. But they didn't quite pull that out of him. I mean, all they all they did was the drugs. But that's that's been elsewhere. Well, of the ones I have seen, I think their cross-examination strategy or talent, whatever you want to describe it, is is poor. I, I don't think they're aimed at the right directions and that they're presenting in ways that put people on guard and do very odd things with yeah. how people respond to them. Yeah. Um, so, I, and that can happen. That doesn't mean they're bad lawyers, by the way. I think it looks like they're both confident sides of lawyers here, but mm -hmm. it, it didn't work out for them. And... I'm, I'm interested in watching that. We don't really get to see that in depositions because you have different lawyers doing objections and edits and whatever happened behind the scenes. Um, yeah. So I've been personally removed from watching them in cross X for a little while. Uh, but yeah, I think they could have, I think they could have done better on cross-examination of both the sister and Isaac from the sound. I agree. Of 